Greetings, Raji here. So I'm squatted down in the bushes and I'm peeping. <laughs> no, oh, let me stop being so dramatic. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but actually, we better go inside. I don't want to get arrested for indecent exposure. <laughs> Come on, let's go in. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, what it's all about. So, I had to do this video because of the latest uh, law that was passed in. Uh, I'm trying not to trip. <laughs> okay, here we are. The latest law that was passed in North Carolina. It's actually called the HB2 North Carolina Bathroom Law. And many people are considering it uh, to be uh, an anti-transgender law because the law basically states that... Um, make sure the lighting's right. <laughs> Let me stop. The law basically states that anyone that uses a bathroom, whether it be male or female... They must use the bathroom of the sex that they were assigned at birth. So, in other words, the gender marker that is on their birth certificate. Now, can you picture me in the men's room? I mean, really, think about it. <laughs> I don't think it would make for a really good situation. It probably would actually make for... <sighs> A naughty situation. But anyway, I I actually have my own bathroom story. There's a company that I used to work for, and they shall re remain nameless. But uh, at this company, I was assigned one bathroom to use. It was one of those individual bathrooms where you walk in and close the door and it's only you in the bathroom. Well, that's all fine and good. The only problem is the bathroom was located all the way across the other side of the building from where I was working, from my department. And mind you, think about like bigger than a football field type building. I mean, it was humongous. All right. Not only that, the bathroom was only open up until about 4.35 in the evening. Well, I worked the night shift. So for about four of uh, hours of my shift, I didn't have a bathroom to use. And, you know, when I would use the bathroom, the times that it was available to me, uh, because it was so far across the building, of course it would take me longer to go to the bathroom than it would my fellow co-workers. So my supervisor would actually dock me for time because of that. Okay. Like it was my choice to, to use that bathroom. Anyway, um, there were times that when I tell you I just held it uh, for my whole shift, I'm surprised my bladder didn't explode, honey. Oh, yes. <laughs> and... Um, Thank God I don't have any bladder problems now from that because I was there for about mm, over six years, actually. So anyway, uh, oh my God, it's just, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty details of it. But I will say this. There were times when the bathroom wasn't available to me and I couldn't hold it. And I actually had to pee pee in my car. Oh, boo hoo, right? Poor me. Well, no, really. I mean, think about it. Uh, I guess it's all relative, though, because I was watching the uh, Global Citizens Festival on MSNBC the other night. And when I tell you, when I heard that Nigeria has a public defecation problem, when I heard it, I was like, what? 
I turned it up, turned the volume up. I'm like, am I hearing correctly? Public defecation problem. I went online, I Googled it. And sure enough, articles came up about Nigeria's public defecation problem, meaning that people practice public defecation, going defecating in public. And even some images came up. All of the images were men doing it. And they basically squat down, pull their butt cheeks out, and do what they need to do. Uh, there, were, there was actually a picture of two guys squatting together. I don't know if they were buddies or brothers. But they were only a couple feet apart, squat down, waiting, you know, go, trying to go uh, defecate. And, but they both had their heads turned. Like, one had their head turned in this direction, the other one had it in the other. So I guess that was called <laughs> to give each other privacy. So, I, you know, I just, um, I couldn't believe it. So then, you know, you have to say, well, damn, <laughs> Raji, at least you had a car to go pee pee in, right? <laughs> That's what I mean about it being all relative. But the reality is, the truth is, that when you belong to a group of people, whether it's a, an organization, um, a work situation, whatever it is, and you are singled out as someone that isn't allowed to do something that everyone else is allowed to do, it basically, on some level, is a form of being ostracized. It really is. And it's, I would say, the feelings that I got from it were... Uh, basically, uh, shame, uh, sadness, uh, anger. There were a number of feelings that I experienced from being treated like the way I was. Bathroom is just one thing. There were a lot of other issues. Um, but I have to give props to, I would say, uh, the 10% out of 100 of co my coworkers that did accept me and respect me. And that made it, I guess, tolerable for me to be there as long as I was. But uh, it's just important, I think, for us to really think about that. You know, to make someone like me have to use a bathroom, the male men's room, like the law in North Carolina, is really, it's ridiculous. It really is. Besides the fact that Ladies, the dynamics of a ladies' room and a men's room are different. In a ladies' room, basically everything is done privately. You go into a stall, you do your business, and you're, uh, you go about your business. You're done. Uh, in a men's room, you know, they do have the open urinals. It's just a different climate. The good news is equality is happening. We are living in a world where equality, equity in some cases, um, justice for people, it's happening, it's moving forward. Slowly, but surely. And anytime you see a movement, uh, an, an equality movement, a, a civil rights movement uh, that's uh, moving forward, you're going to get a little backlash from the, the closed-minded people that don't want to see it move forward. But the reality is you can't stop it because equality, human rights, justice for all is what it's supposed to be. It's right and it's the way we as human beings should treat one another. Love, peace, and blessings, guys.